Hi, my name is Ben Freer. I'm an immigration lawyer for entrepreneurs. And today I'm gonna to share a recent example from my practice and use that example to discuss the possibility of obtaining an E2 visa for a landscaping company or a similar blue collar service business. Recently, a client from Pakistan obtained E2 status for a landscaping business that he established while visiting on a B1 visa. I was really happy for him and his family, and I think there are a number of valuable lessons that can be learned by talking in general terms about his experience. In this case, my client did not actually apply for an E2 visa. Instead, he decided to apply to change his status from B1 to E2. Typically, I try to talk my clients out of applying for a change of status for a number of reasons. But in this situation, a change of status kind of made sense. My client understood that as soon as he leaves North America, he would essentially abandon his E2 status. But this wasn't gonna be an issue because he had no intention of leaving the country in the next few years. Also, he had a clear understanding that an E2 visa will not be guaranteed when he eventually applies for the visa. However, he could put himself in a better position for an E2 visa approval if his businesses already create American jobs and generating profit. Based on the many conversations that I've had with prospective E2 investors, there's a common misunderstanding about the type of business investment that can work for the purpose of the E2. The number one most popular question is, how much do I have to invest to get an E2 visa? Many people tell me if they've heard that you have to invest $100,000 or $150,000. But the reality is that in many cases, an E2 visa can be obtained for much less. Now, there are a few major caveats to that statement. First of all, it is true that higher investments generally face less scrutiny. Second, there are some consular posts that are unlikely to consider an investment under $150,000. And third, if your business requires an investment of $100,000 or $150,000 to get it started, you should be prepared to invest that amount. But many businesses simply don't require a $100,000 investment to launch. So what do you do if the business that you're considering costs less than that amount to start? Should you give up on your E2 visa plans? I don't think so. Again, it will depend on the post that you'll be applying through, but if your business requires an investment that is less than $100,000 and you can clearly show how it will create jobs, then you should consider proceeding with your plans after consulting with an immigration lawyer. My client applied for a change of status from B1 to E2 for his landscaping business. His business wasn't particularly complicated. His investment consisted mainly of the following. He spent about $15,000 on equipment and a work vehicle. He spent $9,000 on rent, and he spent approximately $14,500 on professional services. The total investment ended up being approximately $82,000 and $54,000 of that amount had been spent at the time that he applied for his change of status. The remainder of the investment was held in the company bank account to cover operating expenses. My client received E2 status even though his investment was relatively modest. How was he able to succeed? In my opinion, he succeeded due to job creation. My client's business plan projected three employees by the end of the first year of operations and 10 employees by the end of the fifth year. Since his business was realistically projecting growth and substantial job creation, his business was not marginal, which is one of the E2 requirements. If you decide to apply for the E2 visa for a landscaping business or a similar blue collar service business, there's a good chance that your investment will be a little bit low. As a result, you may face extra scrutiny, but you have an advantage in the sense that these businesses need workers. It is common knowledge that landscaping businesses need landscapers. Cleaning businesses require cleaners. Construction companies need construction workers. If you can clearly demonstrate that the investment you've made is large enough to start operations, you have purchased everything that you need and American jobs will be created, then an investment in a simple blue collar service business can lead to an E2 visa. So I hope this example is helpful. You can get an E2 visa for a landscaping business or a similar business, but it will not always be possible. To gain a better understanding of the likelihood of an E2 visa approval, given your unique circumstances, I encourage you to reach out to one of the many amazing US immigration lawyers that you can find across the globe. And one last thing, if you did enjoy this video, please like it or pass it along to someone who may benefit from it. Thanks for your time.